So now we'll discuss enzymes. And at their root, enzymes are protein catalysts. And so first we'll go over the definition and some of the features of catalysts before we get to other things like the types of enzymes, the mechanisms of catalysis, how they're regulated, and various enzyme kinetics that you can use to figure out how quickly a reaction is proceeding. So an enzyme in the body is a protein that serves as a catalyst. And the reason that this is important is because a lot of reactions just happen spontaneously at various rates. But in order for the body to have control over what reactions are occurring and maintain homeostasis, it helps to have enzymes, which are catalysts that we can produce, that allow us to then control the degree to which certain reactions go forward and other ones don't. And so that's a major part of maintaining homeostasis within the body's physiology. So we'll go over some features of catalysts and then that'll help us understand what enzymes can do and what they can't. So going back to our discussions in general chemistry, we realize that a catalyst is something that has one role and that is to lower the activation energy. And so here we have the curve in black that corresponds to the reaction progress without a catalyst. And notice that our y-axis is Gibbs free energy. And so without a catalyst, it, the activation energy, which is the point between the initial position and the transition state, which is a highly activated state, the activation energy is much greater than it is in the enzyme catalyzed catalyze situation. And so notice that the catalyst lowers the activation energy and the activation air energy is the barrier to the reaction occurring. As soon as you get up to that transition state, it's very easy for the reaction to move forward. But it's difficult to find enough energy to get to this level. And so enzymes make it a lot easier. And by doing that, the role of lowering that activation energy with the catalyst is that the activation energy is the primary determinant of rate. If the activation energy is lower, the reaction will occur more quickly. So activation energy determines the rate. And so if you have a catalyst, it lowers the activation energy, thus increasing the rate constant and increasing the rate of a reaction. Now something to realize is that a lot of reactions occur both forward and backwards. So they're in an equilibrium. It's a double arrow kind of situation. And that also means that if the activation energy of this transition state is lower in the forward direction, notice that in the reverse direction, it is also lower. It's far lower here than it would be if you were doing it in the non-catalyzed position. And so it makes it easier for the reverse reaction to occur, just like it makes it easier for the forward reaction to occur. So what catalysts do is they lower the activation energy, which determines the rate, and thus it increases the rate constant, and by doing that, it increases the rate of the reaction. But it's really important to be able to know what enzymes and, and catalysts don't do, because a lot of times these can be used as tricky questions that can make you choose the wrong answer on your exam or on your MCAT. What enzymes don't do is they don't change the equilibrium constant or the equilibrium position. And that's very important because realize that yes, the forward reaction moves quickly, but so does the reverse reaction when you have that catalyst. And because of that, the position where you see equilibrium, and remember equilibrium is defined by two things. One is it's defined by the concentration of your reactants and products being constant. But it's also defined as the point when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. And that's why you don't see the concentrations change. You still have the reaction moving forward, but it also moves backward. And so the position of equilibrium and thus the concentration of reactants and products at equilibrium will not be changed by a catalyst. Something else that doesn't change is the Gibbs free energy or the change in the Gibbs free energy. Realize that you basically calculate that by looking at where the reaction starts and where it finishes. The so remember this y-axis is the Gibbs free energy and so it will start out at some energy level and it will end up at a different energy level. But notice that that doesn't change whether you're using 
an enzyme as a catalyst or whether you're not catalyzing your reaction. The change in Gibbs free energy will be maintained. So something that is exothermic without an enzyme will be exothermic with an enzyme. It might happen more quickly and more frequently, but every time that reaction occurs, it's the same change in energy overall. So you don't see a change in equilibrium, and that's because the forward and reverse are going faster and they'll both reach that point at the same concentrations. You don't see a change in the Gibbs free energy. And very, very important to realize is that one of the definitions of a catalyst is that a catalyst is not used up or changed in the reaction. It may be temporarily modified as the reaction is moving forward, but you don't use up a catalyst. You never run out of a catalyst if you're using something like an enzyme to catalyze the reaction. So it's not used up in the process, and that means it can continue to catalyze this reaction as long as you have your substrate. So the big things to think about whenever an enzyme question comes up that deals with energy exchange and perhaps kinetics is that the enzyme is a protein in the body that works as a catalyst. That's important because it lets us control the rate at which reactions are occurring and thus certain reactions can occur more quickly and we can maintain homeostasis. It lowers the activation energy in order to do that. The lowering of the activation energy increases the rate constant and thus increases the rate of the reaction. But it does not change the position where you find equilibrium. So K will still be K. The equilibrium constant will be maintained. The Gibbs free energy will not change because notice from beginning to end, the difference is the same whether you take the catalyzed path or the non-catalyzed path. And realize that like any catalyst, it's not used up or changed between the beginning of the reaction and the end. It might go through slight modifications as the reaction is occurring, but you'll end up with the exact same catalyst as you had in the beginning and it will not be used up when you use a catalyst in order to facilitate a reaction moving forward.